Hello and welcome to The Dapper Suite. My name is Johan and today we are going to do something that I absolutely adore and that is amazing cheese boards. And I do pretty good cheese boards, but we have an expert here and that's my friend Chef Yo. I'm John, nice to meet you. Yes, and he makes the most beautiful cheese boards and you Thank have you. brought a number of them to Chris's and my dinner parties and they are always a huge hit that everyone Thank you. loves them and photographs them and go crazy for them. There's a lot of social media exposure. Yes, parties. I know and John is a private chef so he do these things for like people in LA area as a profession so this is quite a treat to get to do. So when you approach a cheese board how do you do it? What are your thoughts? What do you do? So first I always um, try and find out how many people we have who are going to be at the party. Okay. So that would kind of determine the size board potential you would want to have. Mm -hmm. So we have some different boards here or a platter. Um, so let's say we're gonna have four people. So I would do at a minimum, you'd want to make sure that you have at least three cheeses. Three cheeses, okay. Um, yeah, I'd do that too. And so you want to determine too if you're going to go a little bigger on the board versus are you having a large meal are the appetizers going to be heavier you know that would kind of determine how much if you want to um, include some different meats with the cheeses mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do two or three salamis a pate maybe three cheeses so basically the function of the board is it uh, a little snack with drinks before dinner yes. then probably a little bit lighter less on the meats right and if it is a cocktail party and that is the main instead of a meal then right. heavier and more and maybe more meats and patties exactly okay so minimum of three cheeses that's honestly i do the same thing and how do you think about what cheeses to select so when i do these i like to kind of have a cheese that kind of represents each animal so we have a goat we have a sheep we have a cow okay ultimately. so those that's kind of my baseline and then from there i like to have a little hard a little soft depending upon you know kind of everybody's taste um, you want something that's spreadable so different textures so different we want textures. uh like something soft and creamy yes. we want like a hard firmer type of cheese and we want different kind of flavor profiles yep. that speak to different people so it's the biggest variety yes possible. you have a wider audience okay because a goat cheese can be quite pungent versus a uh, right. cow cheese can be milder. Right. Uh, blue cheese, for example, if something yeah. is too fragrant or pungent, it, it could potentially overpower yeah. kind of the board and some of the other delicate flavors that you're going to add in addition to the cheese and the meats. So if I get it right, we will think about how many people. Yes. The function of the board will determine how many cheeses and uh, the kind of board we will do then the different types so cow, cow goat and sheep milk those are the three categories Correct. and then textures so soft and creamy firm styles maybe like uh gruyere or gouda or something yep exactly okay um parmigiana reggiana you could do a harder cheese would be great um I am going to apologize, there's a little extra noise here with a couple well, of Boston Terriers. Um, we are all dog lovers yes. and um, I, I love my dogs, so they run around and they've been a part of the video, so that's okay. Yeah, so they're, they're, they had to sign non-disclosure forms. Oh, okay. Which is yes. great. Um, but yeah, so at different types of cheese, so the hard ones are great. I love a big wedge of Parmesan or something that you oh, can kind yeah. of chunk off. I love it when you kind of like keep the rind and then you have like right. the, the different um, irregular pieces. Exactly. With a little knife or something or a little fork. Well, I think that's the whole idea of these boards is that they're imperfect and they're beautiful and they're colorful, but there's all these different flavor profiles. Yeah, I try to think of them as organic, but like still like a planned natural organic. <laughs> Exactly. So the spreads, you have mentioned like to mm -hmm. me a caviar cheese. I've never heard of that. What is that? So depending upon who's and making you know I it, love caviar. So. <laughs> he tends to eat all the caviar. I do. I do. Um, well, um, John has had a, a caviar spread only for uh, New Year's. So that was quite a treat. So yes. none of us had any. Your no, had I think I had all of it. <laughs> it was delicious. Um, but a caviar cheese, um, different makers will do it. Um, at the the farmers market here in LA, um, there's a great one from Monsieur Marcel, which is a little French um, cheesemonger and gourmet store. And we're and gonna then, head there next. Yeah. And actually, buy our cheeses so you can see. 
Exactly. And they make a beautiful, it's a, it's a cow cheese, it's soft and creamy, and they top it with caviar. Ooh. So it's really lovely. I hope they have it today, because I would want to try that out. So then we have soft ripe milk cheeses, maybe brie or camembert. Is that right. something that you would add or? Yes, um, I love a brie, anything creamy. Um, we like Cowgirl Creamery is a great one that's local. It's Northern California and they make a brie triple cream, which is nice. Ooh, I love a yeah. triple. So do you have any tip for where to start? Like we know we're going to have the different categories. Right. But... I love going to whoever, whatever your store is. We like Monsieur Marcel, which is a little French um, artisan uh, to gourmet market. Yeah. I always ask the cheesemonger, do you have something that you're in love with right now? Maybe an aged cheese that is just kind of perfect to serve mm. today something that's um, you know any kind of flavor that they prefer or some type of cheese that is really something they've really gotten in right now that right now like, that's, that's you want to eat it yeah when truffle cheese is in season oh, yeah. that is like my like I, I built everything around that so I start that and it's often that the recommendation is like where I start yeah I mean you can pretty much not go wrong with a recommendation from a professional cheesemonger yeah. yeah so then we'll add meats and right. obviously if it is a pre-dinner board right. it's probably less on the meats right and if it is a cocktail party and this is instead of a meal then we'll go heavier on the meats and i typically would choose a couple different salamis an italian hard salami um, you know, there's so many great varieties. Again, you can ask your kind of your cheesemonger would typically know which meats um, that mm -hmm. he's in love with. Uh, pâtés are fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, there's pork, duck, chicken liver. I mean, what's your favorite? Mine is probably duck pâté and then also French country pâté. But you have um, really gotten me into some pâtés that might have some flavorings in them. Yeah, there's a lot of pâtés you can do. Sometimes they make them with port wine or Madeira wine, so it adds kind of a sweetness to kind of complement the, the meat and the pâté, which are really nice on the board. Oh, yes. And I also like some of those air-dried hams. Oh, yes. So... The Iberico or you know the Serranos, um, your prosciutto. They're great because they're very thin and they mm -hmm. kind of add another kind of layer and texture. You can kind of pile them. A bit. Yeah, and you can make the the height there and the drama. I like. <laughs> They're great. They're very. I mean, you can wear it as like over your head as like a cap. I mean, whatever you're in the mood for. They're great. <laughs> I would like to see that meat hat. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but yeah. So, um, fruits. Yes. Speaking of hats and fruits, um, I love fruit, uh, whether it's dried or fresh. Um, they're great. Dried apricots, dried cherry. Um, there's so many great varieties, and they add again a really nice texture and complement. Fresh fruit being stone, se uh, stone fruit season is right now. So you have apricots, peaches, nectarines, um, all this great fruit. You could do, um, you know, orange wedges, apples, pears, Pears whatever is you a want. Classic. And I love grapes personally because mm. I feel like it can create some height and drama on my board. And there's multiple colors you can use. Yep. And stuff. Black, green, um, different shades of red. So the grapes are really nice, kind of traditional way to kind of enhance. Yeah, love it. And then we have category of nuts. I love nuts. You do Not love nuts. <laughs> um, I love salted nuts. So cashews, almonds, uh, there's so many great ones. Pistachios are great, um, raw nuts are great if you have a walnut, and especially if you're gonna use a honey with some of the nuts are great. Like if you took a raw walnut with a little goat cheese and a little hot honey drizzle, it'd be amazing. Yeah, mixed nuts or almonds or yep. any of that. Any, all of the above. Yes, and you mentioned honey, um, yes. so you add sweet with your savory then. I do. I mean, I really, um, there's so many local honeys that are great. You can get at your farmer's market or your favorite store. Um, just a little drizzle. They're making these hot ones now that are infused with Calabrian chilies and, and different kind of levels to the honey. So another component. Yes. Very fun. Anything else you can add for sweetness? I mean, you can do preserves, um, again, seasonally, like you can do a strawberry preserve, a peach, a chutney, which is Ooh, amazing. chutneys are lovely. With nuts and currants and Monsieur Marcel, one of our favorite places, makes an incredible chutney. Oh yeah? Yeah. Let's which, see about We're going to buy some today. Okay, perfect. And then, like, the adding of fresh herbs and things? 
Pressure herbs are great. So um, again, it's another color to add with green. So a big, beautiful, um, you know, piece of a uh, big bouquet of basil, and maybe some arugula to have as like a little bird's nest with some nuts and olives and cheese in it. And any fresh herb, anything that smells really fragrant, yeah. is gonna help to kind of add that next level. I love sometimes when you just would poke some um, rosemary into like a cheese yes. or something to like gives it a little bit of a, like almost like statuesque. Anything from the garden, you know, which just yeah. really works well on these boards. And one thing that you did on our last board for our last dinner party okay. was Remember. edible flowers. Yes. And I've used edible flowers in many other ways, but never on a meat and cheese board. And when you brought that, I was like, well, my and that was gosh. Michael, my husband, who is very, he's gotten very much involved in these boards and he was like, we need to have edible flowers. So they, I love they obviously, um, you remembered it. So they're I, I certainly Great do component. because I filed it um, into my little library of like, I'm going to have to do that myself yep. one day. So when it comes to breads, yes. what, what do you think of? What, what do you go to and what do you say? So my go to, I love non bread using something that's just a plain non without garlic, mm -hmm. cut them into strips, which are great because they're a little chewy and um, they, they, they're not going to get stale. Yeah. Um, baguettes work great. I prefer sourdough, which can say chewier. The French can become a little more stale if okay. they're sitting on the board. Yeah, I can see that. Dark breads are great. Um, any I kind of love crackers. A dark rye bread. That dark rye breads so are amazing. Delicious. They work great with cheese. Um, anything with like herbs kind of baked in it, but you don't want necessarily something that would take away from the flavor of what you're kind of adding to it. Yeah. But it's kind of sky's the limit. The farmers markets and the breads that we have available today are amazing. Yeah, I've seen you use pretzel bread before. Pretzel bread is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, yeah? sweetness, um, it's got some rye in there, and it's a great, I mean, I could just eat a thing of pretzel bread. I'd yeah. Say, so. so when it comes to the crackers, basically more neutrals, or do you do Neutral flavored? with herbs, or like a rosemary herbs. cracker, yeah. or you could do water crackers, which are very traditional. I like to kind of update it and make something a little more fun. Yeah, water crackers are, are like, they're fine. They're, I think our parents, like, parents, you know. But they are very, very bland. Yes, it's kind of like eating a, a crispy piece of paper. Yes. <laughs> Not a lot of flavor. Yeah, I think of communion when I think of... <laughs> well, you know, I didn't have much communion be Jewish, but um, there are many other things I could compare it to. Yes. <laughs> so, um, then it is all about selecting board sizes. Yes. And the first thing that you have already mentioned, which I love, is the fact that it doesn't have to be a board. Correct. It can be a plate even. A platter. So yeah, a platter. they work great. So the so, platters are great because, and this one I love because of the color. This is Heath Ceramics, but there's so many different versions out there. And typically somebody might have one of these in your cupboard, you might not even think about it because you don't use them that often. So yeah. they make a great board to kind of complement when you add different components. So and I've never used a platter before, so that's a great tip. Because otherwise, wood boards are usually the what you would think of using. But this one is especially nice. I love this band of um, alternate wood in contrast with the graining and these like handles that are so unique. So this one's from an artist in Portland, and these are um, they're actually railroad stakes that he's kind of made and fabricated to this board, which makes the board kind of a piece of art as you're adding more art to the board. Wow. So this one's full of all the different grains and textures, and I like to mix it up. And then it's not always just one board. Sometimes it's multiple boards or a platter and a board. And that is something that I've never done before. I'd only done like one board and I did a bigger one if I need a bigger, but last time you brought multiple boards. I did. And one big round one and one very long. I like big boards and I cannot lie. <laughs> it's, just, it's true. And then we well, have, and then also like, so these are gonna be your vessels, your, your dishes for your olives and your nuts or your fruits. And so as you kind of like add layers, you'll see when we make this board later, it's really fun to play with these different mm -hmm. textures. And you probably have these in your cupboard. Yes. You might not use them all the time. So, And it brings in colors oh, that right. still makes it look natural and organic, but and still And you can do like a fun. white, like look at how pretty the white looks with the teal. Like it's just, it's a great pop. And this is a local artist in Portland, Isabel Soule. Um, so it's fun to kind of collect on your travels too. If 
there's things you have in your in your collection. And Bring I them love, out, use I them. I love it, um, being eclectic and telling a story of your life right. and your travels, I guess. Well, and every, usually all these pieces have a story, right? Yeah. I mean, don't they always? They always do. You eat with your eyes and not exactly. just with your taste buds. So let's um, um, not waste any more time. Let's go and buy cheese. Let's go, dude. I'm hungry. We're going to the market. We'll see you soon. Bye. We just arrived at the farmer's market, and this is a lot of place, not just cheese. cheese, meat, and all the other things. So let's get going. So we're gonna do a um, let's do a humble fog. Uh, we're doing a cheese board. Uh, we're supposed to do kind of about that much. That's part of the other. These cheeses are amazing. They have the best cheeses. So want to do a truffle brie? How could you ask me that? Of course I want to do a truffle brie. I yeah. love truffles. And um, you see it? Right here, truffle brie. Oh yes, it's only sixty dollars a pound. It's a steal. <laughs> hey, this little one. What are those? These are little chutneys and servos that go great on the different cheeses. Mm. Do you want to do any blue smoke, cheeses? Smoked blue. You like smoke? Yes. Smoky blue. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hi. Uh, so there's a beautiful smoky blue. I think we're gonna do. Okay. It's delicious. I've never, I've had smoked cheeses and I've had blue cheeses, but I've never had smoked blue cheese. This one's great. You actually smoke it. Just kidding. Uh, no, it is um, it's smoked and it has a really wild, beautiful flavor. It's going to complement some of the other things we're going to layer onto it. Okay. So we picked a pork pate and okay. now we're going to pick out some salami. All right, there are so many choices here. What are you thinking for today? I'm thinking about um, doing the Molinari, which is one of my favorites. It's really authentic. It's a, it's a hard salami, it's dry. Uh, I mean, it's, it's got beautiful oils, but it's not straight here. It's the Olo Toscano Salame. Okay, perfect. You get it sliced then? Yeah, or? we'll get it sliced. Okay, perfect. And do you want to do a virico on the ham, or you want to do prosciutto or serrano? Um, what would you normally uh, choose here? Because I like them all. Well, this one is 159 a pound, so I'm going to say we should go with this one for 30 dollars a pound. Okay, whichever. Um, mozzarella. So the rosemary sea salt, this is a great flat cracker, um, which is great for a cheese board. Okay, let's get that. Okay, we're gonna get that one. And we can mix it up. We could do something like this, like yeah. this is a really cool, this is an olive oil So that's cracker. also rosemary and this is rosemary? Yeah, these are, I mean, we're not gonna get those today, but okay. this is another one that I also really like. And then we could just do a simple olive oil cracker, which oh, is just kind of like, good. yeah, it has a nice profile. So maybe we'll get these. Fancy salts, I love them. Uh, Slices. You do know that my life is not complete without truffle salt. I need it on everything all the time. I put it on just fresh tomatoes that Chris grows in the garden with truffle salt on. Yeah. You can also do it all the top and on is a great thing um, to kind of complement. So maybe you want to try like they have a house made tapenade with Kalamata olives, which is great. They're California. This is a really nice in the dish. Let's okay. try these too. Oregano, sage. Hi. How are you? Can we get like um, 
of the fancy mix. This is the salted, right? Yeah. yeah. What do you got? Uh, yeah, like a half thumb. Thank you. Half thumb of nuts. Half thumb of nuts. Salty nuts. Always. So we are back from the store and um, of course John threw together a delicious little lunch for us. Thank you. Yes, that was a treat. But here we have everything that we bought at Monsieur Marcel and actually also at the farmer's market in general. Right. So talk us through it. Why did you pick the different things here? Sure. So we, we started out with a little produce. So this is arugula. So this is kind of in its natural form. You would find this in the fields like this. So we'll, we're going to use this to kind of accent the board and kind of play off of it and put some stuff on it. Um, we got a few different cheeses. We got a sheep's milk gouda. It's euphoria. Um, so euphoria is a skin gouda. Yeah, a sheep milk. Uh, this is a sheep uh, milk gouda. Okay. Exactly. Um, we also got a... Sorry, we have a truffle brie. So the truffle mm -hmm. brie, we're using a few other ingredients uh, or accoutrement were added because of truffle brie. The truffle has such a beautiful kind of that umame kind of mushroom flavor. So we thought it would play well with the smoky. So we got some um, some different nuts. We got candied walnuts. We got house made chutney, which is basically with some different nuts, preserves, a uh, little currants. It's sweet, it's a little smoky. Mm -hmm. So we thought some of these things would play well. We also got a, a, a Canadian extra sharp white cheddar. We got a humble fog, which is goat. We got a gorgonzola dolce. Gorgonzola dolce. Which is beautiful. It's um, it's not too strong, but it's creamy. Yeah, it's that's one of the ones that you mentioned. Which is delicious. Um, we have over here euphoria, and that's the, uh, the sheep gouda. And then this is one of our pâtés. This is the okay. country pâté, which is pork. And this one was the one that I was... The humble oh. fog, which is goat. Okay, which one was the one that was ash and That's the humble fog. That is this one. I no blue cheese, it just has a layer of ash in between. Wow. It's really okay. pretty. That's, that's... And it's creamy, it's delicious. And then all of the rest of the accoutrements here, what have you received here? Um, so we have honey. We have, this is a local honey. Um, this is this really cool company that is called Flamingo Estate that's here in Hollywood Hills. This is all local honey. We have some mixed fancy nuts, which are roasted and salted, but not too salty. We have some mini little nectarines here. We have some apricots here. Uh, we have, of course, red grapes. We have a caviar cheese, which is really cool. It's mm. a house-made caviar cheese, which Monsieur Marcel makes, which is lovely. And this is a chutney? This is the chutney. Uh, we have these beautiful cherry, like these are little plump Campari tomatoes, which we're going to slice. Then we'll do a little cracked pepper and a little drizzle of olive oil on them. We have a, these are the candied walnuts, okay. which are a nice kind of accompaniment with the cheese. We also have a beautiful baguette, which is sourdough, which we're going to slice. Add to the board with two different types of crackers. We have a rosemary sea salt and we just have an olive oil. So I am looking forward to seeing this all come together. Yeah. So let's get all of this unwrapped and then let's put it together. Let's do it. Okay. See you on the other side. So what are you adding now? So now we're going to add some of our tapenade. So we're going to okay. add this into a little dish here. We'll spoon a little. I like these little containers with little spoons. So this is something I find that has served my boards really well. So people can kind of get in here at different points and add different things. So we have our honey, which we're gonna add here a little spoon for the honey. So now we're gonna add some grapes. And as you do this, you'll adjust and move some of these things accordingly. So you get the right placement for everything. All right, so we're gonna add some of these nuts. Actually, let's do these in here. Also the candied walnuts. These are candied walnuts also from Monsieur Marcel. Let's see, here, we'll do this. I don't like the same shape being next to the same shape dish. So we did little tomatoes. These are Campari tomatoes. We did a little drizzle with olive oil, some Malden flaked sea salt, and some cracked pepper. Okay. So this is adding to it. Now we're gonna add some nuts. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add some here. Maybe we'll add a few here. So we got our nuts. And then we have some baguette slices. So this is a sourdough baguette. I like to slice on the diagonal, so you get kind of this cool shape. 
So we'll just kind of build our little, like kind of take a bird's nest almost, a really good bird's nest. And the baguette was warm out of the... Yeah. The, Freshly baked. Yes. So we're going to do like this. And we're just going to kind of build, we're going to find our holes and fill them with all these wonderful little treats. So when people come to the board, they're like, oh my God, this looks amazing. I want to try this, I want to mix with that. All right, so we'll add. And they can grab from all sides. They don't have all to sides. like all reach over. Exactly. So now we're going to add some peppers. So we're just going to stick them in here. Where are we going to put the arugula? We're going to put the arugula. That's like the piece de resistance. Okay. So the arugula, we're going to find some, we're going to kind of break it off. Now, sometimes this is hard to find a arugula like this. Lucky for us, we're at the farmer's market. So we're just gonna kind of tuck some of the green in there. So we kind of Ooh, okay. break it off, make it look a little rustic. So you don't want it to necessarily look perfect, or maybe you do, maybe that's your board is perfect. My board typically looks a little more organic, earthy. So we kind of add a little green like that. Here, and we're putting the arugula next to the truffle next to the pet. And then if anything, there's any holes, you can just kind of fill them in accordingly. Just like this. Okay. By the way, I bought this kind of fruit there. I have no idea what it is because I thought it looked cool. So you better find a spot for it. We are gonna put this right there. How about that? Okay. We're gonna add these little guys tucked in over here. We're gonna add, I think we had, is that everything? Okay, so now we're gonna add some of the spreaders for the cheese. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of tuck in wherever. People are gonna help themselves, so it probably will look a little different when people dig in. Yeah. We can kind of like add this one. And then, voila, you have this gorgeous cheese board to wow all your guests. So, John, let's see this board. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we have Tell all me. of our, we have our five different cheeses. We have our, mm -hmm. our salami, our pork pate with black pepper, our chutney, our baby Campari tomatoes with this beautiful olive oil, salt, a little Malden salt, pepper, grapes, we have mixed nuts, we have some apricots. We have this uh, house-made Monsieur Marcel caviar cheese. We have our beautiful honey over here, mm -hmm. a little um, black olive tapenade, and it's time to enjoy the party. I need to dig in, and um, I am sorry, but I am going to first do the truffle. Absolutely, brewery because you truffle know, breeze over here. Yes, you here know that this. is what I here love the most. This is a live action Johan eating. You don't yeah. see this every day. No. You Except don't. if there's caviar. Um, yeah, and um, generally I don't like to eat in front of people. <laughs> but today's the exception. Lucky us. Mm. How is it? It's fantastic. Amazing. Like, I don't think I've ever met a triple cream brie with truffles that I didn't love. Well, here you have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's pretty what, special. What, which part is it that you, uh, speaks most to you? Um, I really love the freshness. So I like the tomatoes, I like seeing the fruit with the cheese. So if I were to build one, so I would take, yeah, let's take this one here. I'm gonna take a little of the gorgonzola dolce, which is over here, which is also very creamy. Well, your specialty is to cook very fresh, yes. local, um, even healthy for someone that wants a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. And um, stay fit and look good. I mean, that's, if I could and only... Well. Yeah, do a little bit more of that. That would be pretty sweet, but mm -hmm. it is. So this is a gorgonzola dolce with a little of the chutney on a little sourdough baguette. Yeah. So fantastic. Mm. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So, if someone wants to get a hold of you, yes. Um, your Instagram. My Instagram is John Lagardere. Okay, so I will actually put that on the screen. Absolutely. Reach out to Instagram. It's public. I always upload pictures of my food, my cheese boards, I cater small events, and I'm a personal chef, so 
Yes, and I can, we can meet. vouch for like what remarkable things he's done for us. So thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this and taking our shopping. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank I'll see you. you all soon. Bye. Bye.